American-led intervention in the Syrian civil war, Wikipedia article audio. Ongoing Coalition of Foreign Countries in Air War, JATFA Euro OIR Background Arming and training the Syrian opposition Coalition Forces Ground, Iraqi Kurdistan Local Ground Forces, Syrian Democratic Forces Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant Al-Qaeda Turkestan Islamic Party July 2014 Rescue Mission Donald Trump, Barack Obama, Chuck Hagel, Ashton Carter, James Mattis, Jen Lloyd Austin, Jen James L. Terry, Jen Joseph Vodal, Jen Stephen J. Townsend, Lars Locke K. E. Rasmussen, Heli Thorning Schmidt, Teresa May, David Cameron, Stephen Hillier, Recep T. Erdoian, Ahmed Davud Oalu, Ismet Yilmaz, Hulusi Akar, Tony Abbott, Malcolm Turnbull, Trevor Jones, David Johnston, Frana O.I.S. Hall and, Genevieve L. E. Dryan, Pierre de Villers, Angela Merkel, Ursula von der Leyen, Volker Weaker, King Abdullah II, Abdullah Ansar, King Salman, King Abdullah al Saud, Mohammed bin Salman al Saud, King Mohammed VI, Abdel Ila Benkarain, Bouchab Arub, Khalifa al Nahyan, Hamid bin Isa al Khalifa, Tamim al Thani, Hamid bin Ali al Ataya, Salah Muslim Muhammad, Masood Barzani, Stephen Harper, Justin Trudeau, Thomas J. Lawson, Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, Abu Allah Afri a Euro, Abu Muhammad al Adnani a Euro, Abu Ayman al Iraqi a Euro, Abu Suleiman a Euro, Abu Ali al Anbari a Euro, Akram Kurbash a Euro, Abu Omar al Shishani a Euro, Abu Sayyaf a Euro, Abu Khattab al Kurdi a Euro. Surveillance flights over Syria Abu Kar al Masri a Euro, Abu Jaber Sheikh, Abu Muhammad al Jolani, Abu Humam al Shami, Abu Hajar al Humsi a Euro, Abu Firaz al Suri a Euro, Abu Muhammad al Ansari a Euro, Ahmed Salama Mabruk a Euro, Musan al Fadli a Euro, Sanafi al Nasr a Euro, David Drugian a Euro, Said Arif a Euro, Abu Omar al Turkistani a Euro, Abu Jaber Sheikh, Coalition Forces, Coalition Forces Air, Support for Kurdish led ground forces, Coalition Forces Ground. U.S. led coalition against ISIL. Local forces. Training Syrian moderate opposition to fight ISIL. Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. Al Qaeda. Multinational air war. Ar al Sham. United States. Jordan. Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant Al-Qaeda Preparations for American airstrikes Jaish al-Sunna Contributing countries Ar al-Sham Over 11,200 U.S. and Allied airstrikes hit ISIL positions, thousands of targets destroyed, thousands of ISIL fighters killed. U.S. and allies supplying weapons and advisors to the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces, U.S. backed rebel training program ongoing, U.S. Marines and Special Operation Forces deployed in Syria. 
The American-led intervention in the Syrian civil war refers to U.S. support of Syrian opposition and the Federation of Northern Syria during the course of the Syrian civil war, and active involvement of U.S. military against the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant and against the Al-Nusra Front from 2014. Since 2017, U.S. has also targeted Syrian military positions. The United States first supplied the rebels of the Free Syrian Army with non-lethal aid, but quickly began providing training, cash, and intelligence to selected Syrian rebel commanders. During the Syrian Civil War, which began in 2011, two U.S. programs attempted to assist the Syrian rebels. One was a military program that planned to train and equip 15,000 Syrian rebels, but was cancelled in 2015 after spending $500 million and producing only a few dozen fighters. A $1 billion covered program run by the CIA was more successful, but was decimated by Russian bombing and cancelled in mid-2017 by the Trump administration. United States, Australia, Denmark, Netherlands, France, Germany, Jordan, United Kingdom The United States began surveillance missions on Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant positions in Syria in September 2014. On September 22, 2014, the United States, Bahrain, Jordan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates began to attack the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant forces inside Syria, as well as the Khorasan group in the Idlib Governorate to the west of Aleppo and the Al-Nusra Front around Raqsa, as part of the military intervention against ISIL. Timeline 2014 September 2014 October 2014 The missile strike on the Sharae Air Base conducted by the U.S. on April 7, 2017, was the first time the U.S. has become a deliberate direct combatant against the Syrian government, and marked the start of a series deliberate direct military action by the U.S. military against the Syrian government A Euro superscript 2S and pro-government forces in May-June 2017 and February 2018. Peshmerga In mid-January 2018, the Trump administration indicated that it intended to maintain an open-ended military presence in Syria to counter Iran's Euro superscript 2S influence and oust Syrian President Bashar Assad. Following the start of the Arab Spring in 2011, protests in Syria against the Assad administration were violently suppressed and a civil war began. By 2012 there were several armed opposition groups operating in the country, including the Free Syrian Army, formed in July 2011 by officers who defected from the Syrian armed forces. In 2012, the Al-Nusra Front was established by the Islamic State of Iraq as the official branch of Al-Qaeda in Syria. The Al-Nusra Front was eclipsed by its own creator, and Al-Qaeda severed its ties to the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant in February 2014, after an eight-month power struggle. At the direction of U.S. President Barack Obama, the Central Intelligence Agency was put in charge of the operations, worth about $1 billion annually, to arm anti-government forces in Syria an operation which formally began in 2013, more than two years after the start of the civil war in 2011. Prior to 2013, the CIA only supplied certain rebel groups of the Free Syrian Army with non-lethal aid, but later began providing training, funding, and intelligence to selected rebel commanders. 
Although a former intelligence advisor who spoke to journalist Seymour Hirsch claimed the CIA had been facilitating the flow of arms from Libya to Syria in collaboration with the UK, Saudi Arabia and Qatar since 2012 or 2011, the first confirmed CIA weapons arrived in spring 2014, there were just a handful delivered to only one rebel group carefully vetted by the CIA. The group, Harakat Hezm, or the Steadfast Movement, showed off the new weapons system by posting the first successful strike on YouTube in April. Another of the groups being vetted was the Islamist Army of Mujahideen, formed in January 2014 specifically to combat ISIS. However, there were indications that the army of Mujahideen was still being vetted in September 2014. YPG, YPJ, Syriac Military Council, al sanadid Forces, Euphrates Volcano, some Free Syrian Army Groups. In addition to the CIA program, on September 17, 2014 the U.S. House of Representatives voted to authorize the executive branch to overtly train and equip Syrian rebels against ISIL forces, at a cost of $500 million. The United States was set to send 400 troops and hundreds of support staff to countries neighboring Syria to train 5,000 opposition soldiers a year for the next three years. The countries taking part in the train and equip program were to include Jordan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey. The groups that were expected to be armed and trained by the U.S. government included fighters from the Free Syrian Army. In October 2014, the Turkish government agreed to help train and equip some moderate Syrian rebels in Turkey. The Pentagon confirmed that it had selected 1,200 Syrian opposition members to begin training in March 2015, with 3,000 to complete training by the end of 2015. The successful experience in Kobana registered trademark had informed U.S. policy in regard to arming Syrian opposition groups other than the Kurdish YPG with plans to give other groups technicals equipped with radio and GPS equipment to call in airstrikes. John R. Allen, President Obama's envoy to the International Coalition Against ISIL, has said it is clearly part of our plan, that not only we will train them, and we will equip them with the latest weapons systems, but we will also protect them when the time comes. In March 2015, the United Kingdom announced that it was sending around 75 military instructors to train Syrian opposition forces. The train and equip program started on May 9, 2015. On May 25, Turkey and the U.S. agreed in principle on the necessity to support these forces with air support. However, only about 200 rebel fighters actually began training, the majority of whom left after being required to agree to fight only against ISIL and not the Assad government. November 2014 Following the abduction of a number of foreigners in Syria, on July 4, 2014, the U.S. carried out an operation to rescue foreign hostages being held by ISIL. U.S. airstrikes were conducted against an ISIL military base known as the Osama bin Laden camp while at the same time, two dozen U.S. Special Forces soldiers parachuted from helicopters near an ISIS building, thought to be for high-value prisoners. No prisoners were found in the building and the soldiers were quickly engaged by ISIL forces dispatched from Raqsa, which started a three-hour firefight. U.S. forces concluded that the hostages were no longer at the site and abandoned the rescue attempt. At least five ISIL fighters were killed and one U.S. soldier was wounded. Jordanian forces were also reportedly involved in the operation, with one Jordanian soldier reportedly wounded, 
but Jordanian involvement was not confirmed. Later on, it was reported that the hostages had been moved 24 hours before the attempted rescue. Following the mission, it was still unclear whether the operation failed due to bad intelligence or whether ISIL forces were alerted in advance of the mission. In the aftermath of the rescue mission, and purportedly as a response to airstrikes in Iraq, ISIL beheaded three hostages over a one-month period, Americans James Foley and Stephen Sotloff on August 19 and September 2 respectively and Britain David Haynes on September 13. On August 26, 2014, the U.S. began sending surveillance flights, including drones, over Syria to gather intelligence on ISIL targets. The flights began gathering intelligence that would aid future airstrikes even though airstrikes were not yet authorized at that point. No approval was sought from the Assad government for flights entering Syrian airspace. December 2014 2015 January 2015 As the siege of Kobana registered trademark continued there were growing calls to also arm the YPG, also known as the People's Protection Units a Kurdish fighting force in Syria heavily involved in the defense of Kobana registered trademark. On October 20, 2014, the Turkish Foreign Minister, Mevla 14 Ta Avuaoğlu announced that the Turkish government would be allowing Peshmerga from the Iraqi Kurdistan regional government to cross their border into Kobana registered trademark to support Kurdish fighters. The change in policy came after the Turkish government had refused to allow Kurdish fighters and supplies to pass through the border to YPG units in Kobana registered trademark, as it viewed the YPG as an offshoot of the PKK. On October 28, Peshmerga from the Iraqi Kurdistan regional government departed Erbil to travel to Turkey and eventually to Kobana registered trademark. A total of 152 soldiers were deployed starting with 40 vehicles carrying weapons, artillery, and machine guns, along with 80 Peshmerga forces, who crossed the border into Turkey by land with the heavy weapons and then drove to the border near Kobana registered trademark. The other 72 soldiers in the contingent flew to Turkey and rejoined the rest of the contingent on October 29. On October 29, 152 Kurdish Peshmerga from Iraq and 50 Free Syrian Army fighters crossed the border into Kobana registered trademark with heavy weapons, small arms, and ammunition. The United States had since 2014 led efforts to establish a global coalition to counter ISIL DACE. On September 5, September 15, and December 3, 2014, various sets of countries came together to discuss concerted action against ISIL. Present at all three meetings were the United States, United Kingdom, France, Germany, Italy, Canada, Turkey, and Denmark. The coalition of September 5 decided to support anti ISIL forces in Iraq and Syria. On September 10, 2014, U.S. President Barack Obama announced a A Euro Superscript 3 Comprehensive A Euro Superscript 3 strategy to counter ISIL that A Euro Superscript 3 in concert with coalition partners will defeat ISIL and deny them safe haven A Euro Superscript 3. The coalition of December 3, 2014 that styled itself as the Global Coalition to Counter the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant agreed on a many-sided strategy against ISIL, including cutting off ISILA Euro trademark s financing and funding and exposing ISILA Euro trademark s true nature. As of March 2015, the U.S.-led coalition comprised over 60 countries, that contributed in various ways to the effort. February 2015 
As of mid-2015, only a group of 54 such fighters had been deployed, which was quickly routed by al-Nusra, and a further 100 trained in Jordan. In September it was reported that a further 100 to 120 were being trained in a second wave, with 75 more Division 30 fighters reported to have re-entered Syria at the end of the month, immediately attacked by al-Nusra. In March 2015, the United Kingdom announced that it would provide military training to Syrian moderate opposition forces, to enable them to defend Syrian communities against ISIL, and later also lead offensives against ISIL. Jane's Defense Weekly reported that in December 2015 the U.S. shipped 994 tons of weapons and ammunition, generally of Soviet type from Eastern Europe, to Syrian rebel groups under Operation Timber Sycamore. A detailed list of weapon types and shipment weights had been obtained from the U.S. government's Federal Business Opportunities website. As of July 2016, extensive arms shipments were continuing. It was reported in July 2017 that the Donald Trump administration decided to phase out the CIA program to equip and train anti-government rebel groups, a move sought by Russia. In his address to the nation on September 10, 2014, U.S. President Obama announced his intention to bomb ISIL targets in Syria and called on Congress to authorize a program to train and arm rebels who were fighting ISIL and the Syrian forces of Bashar al-Assad. For the first time, he authorized direct attacks against the militant group in Syria. In his address, he said the United States were going on offensive, launching a steady, relentless effort to take out the group wherever they exist. Obama also announced creating of a broader coalition against ISIL. Commenting on Obama's address, Russian Foreign Ministry spokesman Alexander Lukashevich opposed the U.S. intervention against ISIL in Syria without the consent of the legitimate government and said that this step, in the absence of a UN Security Council decision, would be an act of aggression, a gross violation of international law. Ali Haydar, Syrian Minister of National Reconciliation, said that any action of any kind without the consent of the Syrian government would be an attack on Syria. On September 17, the U.S. House of Representatives approved Obama's plan to train and arm the Syrian rebels in their fight against ISIL. In a statement following the House vote, Obama said that the United States wouldn't send military troops to Syria. The Senate gave final congressional approval to Obama's proposal the next day. The U.S. did not request permission from the Syrian government, nor did it coordinate its actions with the Syrian government, provide direct notification to the Syrian military or give indication of timing on specific targets, but it did notify the Syrian UN representative, which the Syrian government confirmed. Before the airstrikes began, the United States also informed Iran, the Assad government's largest regional ally, of their intention to launch airstrikes. It did not share specific timing or targets of strikes with the Iranian government but reportedly assured it that the U.S. would not strike any Syrian government targets. On September 22, Pentagon Press Secretary Rear Admiral John Kirby confirmed that the United States and other partner nations had undertaken strikes in Syria using fighters, bombers and Tomahawk missiles in strikes authorized by President Barack Obama. Bahrain, Jordan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates were identified as countries conducting or supporting airstrikes the first night. The initial strikes were coordinated by United States Central Command and targeted about 20 Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant targets, including headquarters buildings. 
Sources in Syria claimed that among the targets was also Brigade 93, a Syrian army base that the militants had recently captured and targets in the towns of Tabqsa and Tel Abiyad in Raqsa province. March 2015 April 2015 The U.S. also targeted the Al-Qaeda-affiliated Al-Nusra Front and the Khorasan Group in the Aleppo and Idlib governorates of Syria. F-22 Raptor stealth fighters were reported to be among the U.S. aircraft striking targets in Syria on the first night of the campaign, carrying out their first combat missions ever since entering service in 2005. May 2015 At least 70 ISIL fighters, 50 fighters affiliated with Al-Qaeda, and an unknown number of civilians were killed overnight by the airstrikes, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights while eight strikes were launched against the Khorasan Group. July 2015 August 2015 October 2015 November 2015 December 2015 2016 March 2016 April 2016 May 2016 June 2016 August 2016 September 2016 October 2016 November 2016 On September 24, the United States and coalition partners conducted a second round of airstrikes on ISIL facilities in Syria. The airstrikes were targeting oil production facilities controlled by ISIL who had been using the oil in order to fund their activities. Some targets were apparently also mobile production facilities which were most likely not refineries. In a third round of airstrikes on ISIL targets on September 25, Arab partners lead the United States in strikes against militant-held oil facilities in northeastern Syria. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates dropped 80% of the bomb tonnage in the third round of strikes compared to other strikes in which the United States lead Arab partners. On September 26, the United States carried out a fourth round of airstrikes on ISIL targets in eastern Syria. The strikes were targeting IS heavy equipment and destroyed four of their tanks in the Deir Ezzizor province. In a fifth round of airstrikes in Syria on September 27, the United States lead strikes along with Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and the United Arab Emirates against ISIL forces in the Kobana registered trademark canton of Syrian Kurdistan. The strikes destroyed two armored vehicles and an unknown number of fighters in an area that had been put under siege by ISIL militants. The siege by Islamic State fighters had recently forced over 100,000 Syrian Kurds to flee across the border to Turkey. On 28 and September 29, the United States carried out two rounds of strikes against its positions across Syria in four provinces. Among the facilities targeted was the entrance to the largest gas plant in Syria, in the Deir Ezzizor province an ISIL training camp and vehicles near an ISIL-controlled grain silo in Manbij, Aleppo province. In an eighth round of airstrikes in Syria on October 1, the United States and coalition partners struck ISIL targets in northern Syria. The daytime strikes targeted ISIL forces laying siege to Kobana registered trademark, a primarily Kurdish city in Syrian Kurdistan in support of the People's Protection Units and Free Syrian Army, who were defending the city. On October 2, the United States lead a ninth round of strikes, along with the United Arab Emirates, 
against ISIL forces across Syria. The strikes destroyed an ISIL checkpoint near Kobana registered trademark, damaged a tank north of Sinjar Mountain, destroyed a tank west of Raqsa, and several ISIL facilities east of Aleppo. In a tenth round of airstrikes in Syria on October 3, the United States, assisted by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates struck ISIL forces in northern and eastern Syria. The strikes destroyed an ISIL garrison south of al Hasaka, destroyed two tanks southeast of Deir ez Zor, destroyed two modular oil refineries and a training camp south of Raqsa, and struck an ISIL building northeast of Aleppo. On October 4, the United States lead an 11th round of airstrikes, along with Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates against ISIL forces across Syria. The US and partner nations carried out nine strikes, destroying an ISIL infantry unit, armored personnel carrier, and a vehicle south of Kobana registered trademark, destroying a tank and a vehicle southeast of Deir ez Zor, damaging the Takba airfield and destroying an artillery piece near Raqsa as well as destroying an IS depot and logistics complex south of al Hasaka. In a twelfth round of airstrikes in Syria on October 5, the United States carried out three airstrikes against ISIL forces in central and eastern Syria. The strikes destroyed an ISIL bulldozer, two ISIL tanks and another vehicle northwest of Mahyadin, and destroyed six firing positions in a large ISIL unit northwest of Raqsa. On October 6, the United States carried out a 13th round of airstrikes in Syria against ISIL forces across Syria. The strikes destroyed an ISIL tank near Takba airfield west of Raqsa, destroyed two fighting positions south of Kobana registered trademark and destroyed a tank southeast of Deir ez Zor. In a 14th round of airstrikes in Syria on October 7, the United States, assisted by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates against ISIL forces across Syria. The United States and partner nations carried out nine strikes damaging multiple ISIL-controlled buildings west of al Hasaka damaging a staging area and IED production facility northeast of Deir ez Zor, destroying three armed vehicles, damaging one armed vehicle, destroying a vehicle carrying anti-aircraft artillery, destroying an ISIL tank, and an ISIL unit in and around Kobana registered trademark, and killing a small group of fighters southwest of Rubiyat. On October 8, the United States lead a 15th round of airstrikes along with the United Arab Emirates against ISIL forces across Syria. The US and the United Arab Emirates carried out nine strikes destroying an armored personnel carrier, four armed vehicles, an artillery piece, and damaged another armed vehicle in and around Kobana registered trademark, striking an ISIL training camp and fighters northwest of Raqsa and destroying a tank northwest of Deir ez Zor. In a 16th round of airstrikes in Syria on October 9, the United States carried out nine airstrikes in the areas in and around the border town of Kobana registered trademark that is under siege. The U.S. carried out six airstrikes south of Kobana registered trademark that destroyed two ISIL-held buildings, one tank, and one heavy machine gun along, a fighting position along with one large and two small ISIL units. Along with strikes south of Kobana registered trademark, the U.S. carried out three airstrikes north of Kobana registered trademark which struck two small ISIL units and destroyed two ISIL-held buildings. On October 10, the United States led a 17th round of airstrikes along with Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates against ISIL forces across Syria. The U.S. and coalition partners carried out nine strikes destroying two ISIL training facilities, three vehicles, 
damaging a tank and striking two ISIL units in and around Kobana registered trademark. The strikes also destroyed an armored vehicle staging facility east of Deir Ezizor and struck a small ISIL unit northeast of Al Hasaka. In an 18th round of airstrikes in Syria on October 11, the United States carried out six airstrikes in and around the border town of Kobana registered trademark that is under siege by ISIL forces. The U.S. carried out four strikes north of Kobana registered trademark striking a fighting position, damaging a command and control facility, destroying a staging building, and striking two small ISIL units. South of Kobana registered trademark, two airstrikes destroyed three trucks. On October 12, the United States led a 19th round of airstrikes along with Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates against ISIL forces across Syria. The U.S. and partner nations carried out four strikes, three in Kobana registered trademark, destroying a fighting position in a staging area, and one strike northwest of Raqsa, destroying an armored vehicle compound. Also, on October 12, the United States announced that the Turkish government had approved the use of Turkish military bases by coalition forces fighting ISIL in Syria and Iraq. These installations will include key bases only 160 kilometers from the Syrian border and important U.S. military bases in Turkey such as the Incirlik Air Base. Despite the announcement of Turkish government approval, on October 13, Turkish officials denied that any agreement had been made over coalition use of Turkish air bases including in Sirlik. In a 20th round of airstrikes in Syria on October 13, the United States and Saudi Arabia carried out eight airstrikes against ISIL forces in Syria. The United States and Saudi Arabia carried out seven strikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, striking a large ISIL unit, two small units, damaging one staging location and destroying another, destroying a heavy machine gun firing position, destroying three buildings, and damaging two others. One other strike northwest of Raqsa struck an ISIL garrison. On October 14, the United States and Saudi Arabia carried out the 21st round and the largest set of strikes against ISIL in Syria since the beginning of the intervention, with 21 strikes against targets in and around Kobana registered trademark, and an additional strike near Deir Ezizor. According to the Department of Defense, the strikes were designed to interdict ISIL reinforcements and resupply zones and prevent ISIL from massing combat power on the Kurdish-held portions of Kobana registered trademark. The strikes destroyed two staging locations and damaged another, destroyed one ISIL building and damaged two others, damaged three ISIL compounds, destroyed one truck, one armed vehicle and one other vehicle near Kobana registered trademark in support of Kurdish forces resisting the siege of the town. In addition to those targets, the airstrikes struck seven staging areas, two mortar positions, three ISIL-occupied buildings, and an artillery storage facility. An additional strike near Deir Ezizor struck a modular oil refinery. In a 22nd round of airstrikes on October 15, the United States carried out 18 strikes against ISIL targets in and around Kobana registered trademark. The strikes destroyed multiple fighting positions and also successfully struck 16 ISIL-occupied buildings. On October 16, the United States carried out a 23rd round of airstrikes with 14 airstrikes against ISIL targets in and around Kobana registered trademark striking 19 ISIL controlled buildings, two command posts, three fighting positions, three sniper positions, one staging location, and one heavy machine gun position. 
In a 24th round of airstrikes on October 17, the United States carried out seven airstrikes against ISIL targets in and around Kobana registered trademark and in northeastern Syria. Six airstrikes took place near Kobana registered trademark, striking three ISIL controlled buildings, destroyed two fighting positions, suppressed three fighting positions, and destroyed two vehicles. One other airstrike near Al Shaddadi struck ISIL controlled oil collection equipment, including several petroleum, oil, and lubricants tanks, and a pump station. On October 20, the United States carried out a 25th round of airstrikes, with six airstrikes against ISIL targets in and around Kobana registered trademark. The strikes destroyed ISIL fighting positions. ISIL mortar positions, a vehicle, and one stray equipment supply bundle from a U.S. airdrop of Kurdish supplies in order to prevent the supplies from being captured. In a 26th round of airstrikes on October 21, the United States carried out four airstrikes against ISIL targets in and around Kobana registered trademark. The strikes destroyed several ISIL fighting positions an ISIL-controlled building, and a large ISIL unit. The British Royal Air Force began operating over Syria in a surveillance role on the same date, making the UK the first Western country other than the United States to operate in both Iraq and Syria simultaneously. On October 22, the United States carried out a 27th round of airstrikes with six airstrikes against ISIL targets in and around Kobana registered trademark. The strikes destroyed several ISIL fighting positions, two ISIL vehicles, an ISIL-controlled building and an ISIL logistical center. In a 28th round of airstrikes on October 23, the United States carried out six airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Deir ez Zor. Four strikes destroyed several ISIL fighting positions, an ISIL vehicle, and an ISIL command and control center near Kobana registered trademark. Two strikes east of Deir ez Zor destroyed several ISIL oil holding tanks. On October 24, the United States carried out a 29th round of airstrikes with six airstrikes against ISIL targets in and around Kobana registered trademark. The strikes destroyed an ISIL vehicle and struck three ISIL units. In a 30th round of airstrikes on October 25, the United States carried out one strike near Kobana registered trademark, destroying an ISIL artillery piece. On October 26, the United States carried out a 31st round of airstrikes with five airstrikes against ISIL targets near Kobana registered trademark, destroying seven ISIL vehicles and an ISIL-controlled building. In a 32nd round of airstrikes on October 27, the United States carried out four strikes near Kobana registered trademark destroying five ISIL vehicles in an ISIL-occupied building. On October 28, the United States carried out a 33rd round of airstrikes, with four airstrikes against ISIL targets near Kobana registered trademark, destroying four ISIL fighting positions in a small ISIL unit. In a 34th round of airstrikes on October 29, the United States carried out eight airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark. The strikes destroyed five ISIL fighting positions, a small ISIL unit, six ISIL vehicles, an ISIL controlled building, and an ISIL command and control node. On October 30, the United States carried out a 35th round of airstrikes with 12 airstrikes against ISIL targets in and around Kobana registered trademark, and against targets near Deir ez Zor and Raqsa. Ten strikes near Kobana registered trademark struck two small ISIL units, 
destroyed seven ISIL fighting positions, and five ISIL controlled buildings. One strike near Deir ez Zor damaged an ISIL headquarters building while another strike near Raqsa damaged an ISIL security building. In a 36th round of airstrikes on October 31, the United States carried out four airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, damaging four ISIL fighting positions and an ISIL controlled building. On November 1, the United States carried out a 37th round of airstrikes with five airstrikes against ISIL targets in and around Kobana registered trademark. The strikes suppressed or destroyed nine ISIL fighting positions, and struck one ISIL controlled building. In a 38th round of airstrikes on November 2, the United States carried out seven airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Deir ez Zor. Five airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark struck five small ISIL units and destroyed three ISIL vehicles. Two airstrikes southeast of Deir ez Zor destroyed an ISIL tank and two vehicle shelters. On November 3, the United States and coalition partners carried out a 39th round of airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Deir ez Zor. Four airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark struck an ISIL fighting position, a small ISIL unit, and destroyed two ISIL controlled buildings. One airstrike near Deir ez Zor damaged an ISIL controlled building. In a 40th round of airstrikes on 4 and November 5, the United States carried out six airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and north of Sinjar just across the Iraqi Syrian border into Syria. Three airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark struck a small ISIL unit, two ISIL fighting positions, and an ISIL dump truck that was used in the construction of fighting positions. One airstrike north of Sinjar destroyed an ISIL fighting position used to launch mortar attacks, and struck a small ISIL unit manning the position. Two additional strikes north of Sinjar struck a small ISIL unit and destroyed an ISIL armored vehicle. On 6 and November 7, the United States carried out a 41st round of airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Tal Abiyad. Seven strikes in and around Kobana registered trademark struck three small ISIL units, seven ISIL fighting positions, and destroyed an ISIL artillery piece. One airstrike near Tal Abiyad destroyed an ISIL weapons stockpile. In a 42nd round of airstrikes between 8 and November 10, the United States carried out 23 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Deir ez Zor. 13 airstrikes conducted in and around Kobana registered trademark struck an ISIL vehicle and five small ISIL units, destroyed an ISIL occupied building used as an ammunition stockpile, an ISIL command and control building, and seven ISIL fighting positions as well as damaging two ISIL fighting positions. In addition, eight airstrikes southeast of Deir ez Zor damaged several structures of an ISIL oil collection facility, which was used to transload oil for the black market, while two airstrikes east of Deir ez Zor damaged an ISIL oil collection point. Between 11 and November 12, the United States carried out a 43rd round of airstrikes with 16 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, near Deir ez Zor, and near Al Hasaka. Ten airstrikes conducted in and around Kobana registered trademark struck eight small ISIL units, damaged three ISIL fighting positions, and destroyed an ISIL logistics facility. Four airstrikes near Deir ez Zor damaged an ISIL crude oil collection facility, struck a small ISIL unit, and damaged an ISIL vehicle. Two airstrikes near Al Hasaka damaged a crude oil collection point. 
in a 44th round of airstrikes between 13 and November 14, the United States carried out 20 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, east of Deir Ezizor, west of Aleppo, and east of Raqsa. 17 airstrikes conducted in and around Kobana registered trademark struck 10 ISIL units, destroyed 10 fighting positions, an ISIL controlled building, two ISIL vehicles, and an ISIL motorcycle. One airstrike east of Raqsa destroyed an ISIL training camp and another airstrike east of Deir Ezizor destroyed an ISIL oil collection point. One other airstrike west of Aleppo struck militants associated with the Khorasan group. Between 15 and November 17, the United States carried out a 45th round of airstrikes with 11 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Deir Ezizor. Nine airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed seven ISIL fighting positions, suppressed an ISIL fighting position, destroyed four ISIL staging areas, and struck one tactical ISIL unit. Two airstrikes near Deir Ezizor struck an ISIL crude oil collection facility and destroyed one ISIL tank. In a 46th round of airstrikes between 18 and November 19, the United States carried out seven airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, southeast of Al Hasaka, and near Hazem. Five airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed an ISIL fighting position, an ISIL staging area and three ISIL controlled buildings, suppressed two ISIL fighting positions, struck two tactical ISIL units, and a large ISIL unit. One airstrike southeast of Al Hasaka damaged a crude oil collection point operated by ISIL while another airstrike near Hazem struck and destroyed a storage facility associated with the Khorasan group. Between 20 and November 21, the United States and coalition partners carried out a 47th round of airstrikes with seven airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Raqsa. Six airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed four ISIL staging areas, two ISIL controlled buildings, two ISIL tactical units, and suppressed an ISIL fighting position. One airstrike near Raqsa damaged an ISIL barracks building. In a 48th round of airstrikes between 22 and November 24, the United States and coalition partners carried out nine airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Raqsa. Seven airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed three ISIL fighting positions along with two ISIL staging areas, damaged an ISIL staging area, and suppressed four ISIL fighting positions. Two strikes near Raqsa struck an ISIL headquarters building. Between 25 and November 26, the United States carried out a 49th round of airstrikes with 10 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark striking an ISIL fighting position, a large ISIL unit, two tactical ISIL units, and destroying four ISIL staging areas and six ISIL fighting positions. In a 50th round of airstrikes between 27 and November 28, the United States carried out two airstrikes near Kobana registered trademark in Aleppo. One airstrike near Kobana registered trademark struck an ISIL fighting position in an ISIL staging area while one airstrike near Aleppo struck a tactical ISIL unit. Between November 29 and December 1, the United States carried out a 51st round of airstrikes with 27 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, near Raqsa, and near Aleppo. 17 airstrikes near Kobana registered trademark destroyed two ISIL-occupied buildings, three ISIL tanks, three ISIL fighting positions, an ISIL armored personnel carrier, three ISIL vehicles and two ISIL staging areas.
It also struck seven tactical ISIL units, targeted six ISIL fighting positions and damaged an ISIL-controlled building. Nine airstrikes near Raqsa struck an ISIL electronic warfare garrison, an ISIL military garrison, an ISIL headquarters building, an ISIL jamming system, an ISIL tank and 14 ISIL vehicles while one airstrike near Aleppo struck a target associated with the Khorasan group. In a 50-second round of airstrikes between 1 and December 3, the United States carried out 14 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroying an ISIL vehicle, 17 ISIL fighting positions, and an ISIL staging area and suppressed eight other fighting positions and striking a large ISIL unit. Between 4 and December 8, the United States and coalition partners carried out a 53rd round of airstrikes with 15 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Raqsa. 14 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed four ISIL fighting positions, three ISIL occupied buildings, two ISIL staging areas, two ISIL tanks, an ISIL motorcycle, a mortar, and struck eight tactical ISIL units along with two ISIL fighting positions. One airstrike near Raqsa struck an ISIL electronic warfare garrison. In a 54th round of airstrikes between 9 and December 10, the United States carried out seven airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroying five ISIL fighting positions, striking three ISIL fighting positions, and striking a large ISIL unit. Between 11 and December 12, the United States and coalition partners carried out a 55th round of airstrikes with seven airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, near Aleppo and near Al-Qa'im. Five airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed five ISIL fighting positions and struck one ISIL fighting position. One airstrike near Aleppo struck five ISIL occupied buildings while another airstrike near Al-Qa'im on the Syrian border destroyed two ISIL fortifications. In a 56th round of airstrikes between 13 and December 15, the United States and coalition partners carried out nine airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Abu Kamal. Eight airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed nine ISIL fighting positions, two ISIL controlled buildings, and two ISIL staging positions as well as striking one ISIL fighting position. One airstrike near Abu Kamal destroyed an ISIL vehicle. Between 16 and December 17, the United States and coalition partners carried out a 57th round of airstrikes with six airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Abu Kamal. Five airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed an ISIL-controlled building, one ISIL staging area, one ISIL bunker, and an ISIL mortar and struck two ISIL tactical units, two additional buildings, and two ISIL fighting positions. One airstrike near Abu Kamal destroyed an ISIL tactical vehicle. In a 58th round of airstrikes on December 18, the United States and coalition partners carried out six airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroying seven ISIL fighting positions in an ISIL building and struck Hoyan ISIL tactical unit. December 2016 2017 January 2017 February 2017 March 2017 April 2017 May 2017 June 2017 Al Nusra Front, Khorasan Group Around 100,000 fighters, 3 MiG-21 or MiG-23 aircraft, at least a few hundred tanks, 
two drones. Tarar Al Sham, 31,000 plus, Karazan, 50, Jund Alaksa, 2100. On December 19, the United States and coalition partners carried out a 59th round of airstrikes with four strikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Raksa. Three airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed two ISIL controlled buildings and an ISIL staging area as well as striking two ISIL tactical units. One airstrike near Raksa damaged an ISIL training compound. In a 60th round of airstrikes on December 20, the United States and coalition partners carried out five airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroying eight ISIL fighting positions. On December 21, the United States and coalition partners carried out a 61st round of airstrikes with three strikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroying an ISIL staging position and two ISIL fighting positions as well as striking two ISIL fighting positions. In a 62nd round of airstrikes on December 22, the United States and coalition partners carried out 12 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, near Aleppo, near Al Hasaka, and near Raksa. Six airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed six ISIL fighting positions and struck four ISIL fighting positions and an ISIL tactical unit. Three airstrikes near Aleppo destroyed artillery equipment and struck ten ISIL buildings, two airstrikes near Al Hasaka destroyed an ISIL tactical vehicle, two ISIL trucks, an ISIL building, and two ISIL storage containers, and one airstrike near Raksa destroyed an ISIL checkpoint complex. On December 23, the United States and coalition partners carried out a 63rd round of airstrikes with seven airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Barguth. Six airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed seven ISIL fighting positions, an ISIL building and struck several ISIL fighting positions and one airstrike near Barguth struck ISIL oil collection equipment. In a 64th round of airstrikes on December 24, the United States and coalition partners carried out 10 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, near Deir Ezizor, and near Raksa. Eight airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed five ISIL fighting positions, an ISIL building, an ISIL staging position, and struck three ISIL tactical units, an ISIL tactical vehicle and an ISIL fighting position. One airstrike near Deir Ezizor struck a crude oil collection point and another airstrike near Raksa struck an ISIL weapons stockpile. On December 25, the United States and coalition partners carried out a 65th round of airstrikes with 15 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, near Al Hasaka, and near Raksa. 13 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed three ISIL buildings, one ISIL vehicle, 17 ISIL fighting positions two ISIL staging positions as well as striking two ISIL fighting positions, three large ISIL units and four ISIL tactical units. One airstrike near Al Hasaka struck an ISIL drilling tower and destroyed two ISIL support vehicles and another airstrike near Raksa struck an ISIL assembly area. In a 66th round of airstrikes on December 26, the United States and coalition partners carried out four airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, destroying three ISIL buildings and two ISIL vehicles. On December 29, the United States and coalition partners carried out a 67th round of airstrikes with 12 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, near Deir Ezizor, and near Raksa. 
10 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed 11 ISIL fighting positions, 2 ISIL buildings, and an ISIL storage container, and struck an ISIL tactical unit. One airstrike near Deir Ezizor struck several ISIL controlled buildings, while another airstrike near Raksa also struck several ISIL controlled buildings. In a 68th round of airstrikes on December 30, the United States and coalition partners carried out seven airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Deir Ezizor. Six airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed three ISIL buildings, damaged one ISIL building, and struck an ISIL tactical unit while one airstrike near Deir Ezizor destroyed an ISIL shipping container. On December 31, the United States and coalition partners carried out a 69th round of airstrikes with seven airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark and near Al Hasaka. Five airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed five ISIL buildings and six ISIL fighting positions while two airstrikes near Al Hasaka destroyed four oil derricks controlled by ISIL. In a 70th round of airstrikes on January 1, the United States and coalition partners carried out 17 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark, near Deir Ezizor, and near Raksa. 13 airstrikes in and around Kobana registered trademark destroyed 12 ISIL controlled buildings, 4 ISIL fighting positions, 1 ISIL vehicle as well as striking 2 ISIL tactical units and 2 large ISIL units. 2 airstrikes near Raksa destroyed 5 ISIL checkpoints and struck an ISIL staging area while two airstrikes near Deir Ezizor destroyed an ISIL fighting position and struck an ISIL shipping container. On February 5, 2015, Jordan elevated its role in the U.S.-led coalition in Syria, launching one of the largest airstrike campaigns since early January 2015, targeting ISIL militants near Raqsa, the de facto ISIL capital inflicting an unknown number of casualties and damaging ISIL facilities. This was done in retaliation against ISIL's brutal murder of Mu'ath al qasisba On February 6, a continued round of coalition airstrikes at Raqsa killed over 30 ISIL militants. On February 21, Syrian Kurds launched an offensive to retake ISIL-held territories in the al hasaka Governorate, specifically in the Tel Hamiz area, with support from U.S. airstrikes. At least 20 villages were liberated, and 12 militants were killed in the clashes. In response, on February 23, ISIL abducted 150 Assyrian Christians from villages near Tal Tamra, Indiana, northeastern Syria, after launching a large offensive in the region. As a result of ISIL's massive offensive in the West Al Hasaka Governorate, the US led coalition increased the number of airstrikes in the region to 10, on February 24, in order to halt the ISIL advance. The airstrikes struck nine ISIL tactical units and destroyed two ISIL vehicles. On February 26, the number of Assyrian Christians abducted by ISIL from villages in northeastern Syria from 23 a Euro 25 February rose to at least 220, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, a monitoring group based in Britain. On February 27, the Kurdish Democratic Union Party and Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that Kurdish fighters had recaptured the town of Tal Hamiz, along with most of the villages occupied by ISIL in the region. At least 127 ISIL militants were killed in the clashes, along with 30 YPG and Allied fighters. One Australian volunteer who was fighting for the YPG, was also killed.
many of the remaining ISIL militants retreated to Tel Brak, which quickly came under assault from the YPG and Allied Arab fighters. On March 1, 2015, YPG fighters, aided by U.S. airstrikes, were able to drive ISIL militants out of Tel Brak, reducing the ISIL occupation in the eastern Jazira Canton to the villages between Tel Brak and Tal Hamis. On March 6, it was reported that Abu Humam al-Shami, al-Nusra's military chief, was killed in a U.S. airstrike targeting a meeting of top al-Nusra leaders, at the al-Nusra Front's new headquarters at Salkin. On March 9, the U.S. carried out another airstrike on the al-Nusra Front, targeting a military camp near Atima, close to the Turkish border in the Idlib Governorate. The airstrike left nine militants dead. On March 24, Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper announced that Canada would be looking to expand Operation Impact to include airstrikes against ISIL in Syria as well. On March 26, the United Kingdom Ministry of Defence announced the deployment of around 75 military trainers and headquarters staff to Turkey, and other nearby countries in the anti-ISIL coalition, to assist with the U.S.-led training program in Syria. The training program will provide small arms, infantry tactics and medical training to Syrian moderate opposition forces for over three years. On March 30, the House of Commons of Canada authorized the extended deployment of its military for one year and the war in Syria. 26,000A Euro 30,000 plus 1 Marine dead Five service members killed, one F-16 crashed, two drones lost. One serviceman executed, one F-16 fighter plane crashed. 7,396 fighters killed. 298 plus killed. 12 killed. 3 killed. Turkey A Euro The Davutoglu government called on the Grand National Assembly of Turkey to approve measures that would grant extensive authority to the president to launch military operations in both Syria and Iraq, including the authority to send troops across the border, although it is unclear whether the Turkish leadership intends to act on that authority. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has urged the establishment of a no-fly zone by coalition forces in northern Syria, United Kingdom A Euro A spokesperson for British Prime Minister David Cameron said the UK would not rule out airstrikes in Syria against ISIL. On September 26, 2014 Parliament voted 524 to 43 to approve action inside Iraq. While visiting Iraqi Kurdistan in mid-October, British Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond said he saw no immediate demand from US and Arab militaries for Britain to extend its airstrikes to Syria. British Defence Minister Michael Fallon said on October 21 that British Reaper drones and rivet joint surveillance aircraft would be starting intelligence-gathering missions in Syria very shortly, united. Nations A Euro Ban Ki-moon, UN Secretary-General, welcomed the airstrikes against militants in Syria, but noted that the involved parties must abide by international humanitarian law and take all precautions to avoid and minimize civilian casualties. Venezuela A Euro at the 69th General Assembly of the United Nations President Nicolas Maduro said its President Bashar al-Assad and the Syrian government which have stopped the terrorists and continued by saying instead of bombing and bombing, we must make an alliance for peace. On April 8, Canada initiated airstrikes in Syria, with two CF-18 fighters bombing a former military installation of the Syrian government that was captured by ISIL near its headquarters in Raqsa. On May 15, 
after surveillance by British special forces confirmed the presence of a senior leader named Abu Sayyaf in LAMR, first SFOD Delta operators from the Joint Special Operations Command based in Iraq conducted an operation to capture him. The operation resulted in his death when he tried to engage U.S. forces in combat and the capture of his wife UMM Sayyaf. The operation also led to the freeing of a Yazidi woman who was held as a slave. About a dozen ISIL fighters were also killed in the raid, two U.S. officials said. The SOAR reported that an additional 19 ISIL fighters were killed in the U.S. airstrikes that accompanied the raid. One official said that ISIL forces fired at the U.S. aircraft, and there was reportedly hand-to-hand -hand combat during the raid. A 60 Black Hawk and V-22 Osprey helicopters were used to conduct the raid, and UMM Sayyaf is currently being held by U.S. forces in Iraq. CNN reported that a senior U.S. military official revealed that in May 2015, U.S. Special Operations Forces came tantalizingly close to capturing or killing ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi in Raqsa, but failed to do so because classified information was leaked to the news media. Following a suicide bombing in the Anel plus or minus Urfa province of Turkey believed to have been carried out by ISIL militants on July 20, as well as an ISIL cross-border attack that killed a Turkish serviceman on July 23, Turkish armor and aircraft struck ISIL targets just across the border in Syria. Turkey also agreed to let the United States use the U.S. Air Force in Serlik Air Base for strikes against ISIL. On August 21, three Islamic State fighters, two with UK nationality, were targeted and killed in Raqsa, Syria by a British Royal Air Force MQ-9 Reaper strike. Prime Minister David Cameron gave a statement to Parliament that one of the British nationals targeted had been plotting attacks in the United Kingdom. Another British national was killed in a separate airstrike by U.S. forces in Raqsa on August 24. Fifty U.S. Special Forces operators were deployed to northern Syria to help train and coordinate anti-IS forces in the region. The introduction of Russian aircraft and ship-based cruise missiles in support of the Syrian government to Syrian airspace creates new threats to the US-led coalition. Discussions are held to deconflict Syrian airspace. On October 10, the state-run Syrian Arab News Agency reported claims that two U.S. General Dynamics F-16 fighting Falcon jets had violated Syrian airspace and bombed two electricity power plants in al rudwaniya East Aleppo, in breach of international law. On October 20 Canada's Prime Minister-elect Justin Trudeau informed Barack Obama by phone of Canada's intention to pull out of bombing raids in Syria. Canada will remain a coalition partner but will stop strikes. After the deadly attacks in Paris, French President François Hollande sent its only aircraft carrier, the Charles de Gaulle, with its 26 fighters to intensify air strikes. On November 27, Syrian Arab News Agency claimed that the US-led international coalition, allegedly fighting ISIS, targeted water pumping stations in al Khafse area, east of Aleppo, causing them to go out of service. According to Bellingcat's investigation, however, it was Russian mod bombing. On December 2, 2015, the members of the Parliament of the United Kingdom voted 397 to 223 in favour of airstrikes in Syria. Within hours, RAF tornado jets carried out their first airstrikes, targeting the Omar oil fields in eastern Syria, which is under his control. On December 6, 2015, a Syrian Arab army base at Deir Ezzetzer was struck, 
killing at least one Syrian Arab army soldier, with reports circulating that as many as four were killed, 13 wounded and two tanks destroyed. Syria accused the U.S. of conducting the strike, however U.S. officials denied this, claiming instead that the bombing was a mistake by Russians. After the airstrikes, the SAA reported that ISIS forces began to attack the base. On March 4, a US-led coalition airstrike targeted Omar al-Shishani, ISIL's top field commander, who was traveling in a jihadista Euro trademark S convoy near al-Shaddadi in northeastern Syria, the strike injured him, and he later died from his injuries. However this was later revealed to be incorrect, he was actually killed in an airstrike in Iraq in July 2016. Also that day, 100 ISIS militants assaulted Peshmerga lines in Syria, U.S. Navy SEAL Charles Keating IV helped the Peshmerga to repel the attack, as ISIS fighters sent a car bomb towards him. Keating led a team to counterattack with sniper and rocket fire. For his actions during the battle he was posthumously awarded the Silver Star. On March 24, U.S. Special Operations Forces conducted an operation with the intent of capturing ABD al-Rahman Mustafa al qadulai in Syria. al qadulai who was the 6th most wanted terrorist in the world and is considered by analysts as the second in command of ISIS, he acted as the group's finance minister and was involved in external plots, he also temporarily commanded ISIS after its commander was injured. U.S. special forces inserted by helicopter and lay in wait for him to intercept his vehicle, the operators attempted to capture him but the situation escalated and at the last moment, they decided to fire on the vehicle instead, killing al qadulai and three other militants. August 2017 September 2017 December 2017 2018 January 2018 February 2018 Airstrikes on the Khorasan Group Syrian reaction to the airstrikes Civilian casualties and alleged war crimes Results Air supply Ground forces Naming of Operation Inherent Resolve Turkish involvement Reactions Foreign reactions Syrian reactions On April 25, it was reported that President Obama authorized the deployment of an additional 250 Special Operations Forces soldiers to Syria in the following weeks, they will join the 50 that are already in the country. Their main aim is to advise, assist, and expand the ongoing effort to bring more Syrian Arab fighters into units the U.S. supports in northern Syria to combat ISIL. In late May, more than a dozen U.S. special forces were pictured in the village of Fatissa, less than 64 kilometers north of Raqsa, and fighting near the front lines with the YPG and wearing both YPG and U.S. insignia on their military uniforms, helping them and other local SDF forces with fire support and coordinating airstrikes from behind the front lines in their advance toward Raqsa. However, the Pentagon and White House insist that the troops are not fighting ISIS on the front lines and are still participating in a non-combat mission known as a euro -retron. advise and assist a euro. Also in late May, a U.S. Special Forces operator was wounded north of Raqsa by indirect is rocket or mortar fire. The Telegraph reported that British Special Forces have been operating on the front line in Syria 
in particular in May when they frequently crossed the border from Jordan to defend a NSA unit composed of former Syrian special forces as it defends the village of Al-Tanf against ISIL attacks. They mostly help the unit with logistics like building defenses and making bunkers safe, the NSA captured the village that month and faced regular IS attacks. An ISIL armored vehicle packed with explosives drove into the rebels' base and killed 11 members of the NSA, injuring 17 others. The wounded were case evacuated by U.S. helicopters to Jordan. The suicide attack damaged the structure of the Al Tanf base. British troops crossed over from Jordan to help them to rebuild their defenses. On June 1, a senior defense official told Fox News that a thousands-strong SDF force consisting of Sunni Arab fighter and a small contingent of Kurdish fighters with assistance by U.S. Special Forces operators and U.S. fighter jets launched an operation to recapture the key ISIS-held town of Manbij in northern Syria, 32 kilometers from the border with Turkey. Islamic State used the town to move supplies and foreign fighters into Syria from Turkey. In the 24 hours since the start of offensive, 18 U.S. airstrikes destroyed ISIS headquarters buildings, weapons caches, training areas, six bridges, and an unknown number of ISIS fighters were killed, however, 15 civilians killed. By June 9, the U.S. Central Command said the coalition conducted more than 105 strikes in support of the SDF's advance. French Special Forces are also offering training and advice to SDF fighters in the area. On June 15, British Special Forces were reported to be operating in the area. Much of the SDF advance was made possible by US led coalition air support with airstrikes being directed by foreign special forces personnel on the ground. On June 3, F-A-18 Hornets launched from the USS Harry S. Truman conducted airstrikes against ISIS targets in Syria from the eastern Mediterranean. It was the first time the U.S. Navy had conducted strike missions in the Middle East from the Mediterranean Sea since flying operations against the Iraqi military in 2003. On June 9, four U.S. Special Operations troops were lightly wounded by shrapnel when an Islamic State anti-tank missile fired at a nearby vehicle exploded in northern Syria, but they quickly returned to duty. On June 16, as part of Russia's campaign to pressure the U.S. to agree to closer cooperation over Syria, Russian military aircraft bombed, with cluster bombs, a military outpost in Al Tanf that was garrisoned by the new Syrian army in southeast Syria. U.S. and British special forces based in Jordan regularly worked with Syrian rebels at the Al Tanf outpost. The airstrike happened 24 hours after a detachment of 20 British Special Forces left the outpost. After the airstrike took place, U.S. commanders warned Russia that the garrison was part of the international coalition against IS and therefore shouldn't be attacked, but 90 minutes later, nearby U.S. warplanes observed Russian jets dropping a second barrage of bombs on the outpost killing four rebel soldiers. A U.S. spy plane overhead tried to contact the Russian pilots on emergency frequencies, but the Russians did not answer. U.S. officials demanded an explanation from Moscow, but they were told the Russian pilots struck the outpost because they thought it was ISIL base. Russian officials then said that Jordan had approved the strikes in advance, but Jordan denied it. Moscow also claimed its air command headquarters in Syria was unable to call off the strikes because the U.S. had not given them the precise position of the outpost. On June 29, as part of the 2016 Abu Kamal Offensive a Euro the offensive by the new Syrian army and several hundred other rebels from different factions that aims to capture Abu Kamal and sever ISIS's transit link between Syria and Iraq, 
Pentagon-trained rebel forces entered the Alhamdan Air Base a Euro 5 km northwest of the border town Abu Kamal following intense clashes. This followed significant advances into ISIL-held territory near the Abu Kamal border crossing, the NSA said it had captured a number of his positions on the outskirts of Abu Kamal, but a raid into the town at dawn was reported to have been repelled by militants. Fighting continued around the town, as coalition airstrikes were carried out on his hideouts, the NSA also said it was coordinating the assault with Iraqi government forces, who were advancing on the border from the other side. NSA issued a statement saying the NSA maintains control of the desert, the approaches to Abu Kamal, and maintains freedom of maneuver. Later on that day, his militants ambushed the rebels, inflicting heavy casualties and seizing weapons according to a rebel source. Is retook the airbase from the NSA and continued to advance against the rebels, recapturing some of the outposts the NSA had captured south of the town, coalition helicopters dropped in foreign airborne troops on the southern edge of Abu Kamal to help the rebels in their advance. Coalition jets also carried out eight airstrikes on his targets in the Abu Kamal area. A contributing reasons for the failure of the operation was the withdrawing of air support at a critical moment, the aircraft assigned to the operation were ordered in the middle of the operation to leave the area and instead fly to the outskirts of Fallujah, where a large convoy of his fighters had been seen trying to escape across the desert after the city was recaptured by the Iraqi army, and U.S. commanders decided that the convoy represented a a euro a strategic target a euro the convoy was destroyed by the U.S. and British planes along with gunships and aircraft from the Iraqi Air Force. On August 7, as part of Operation Tidal Wave 2, Multiple coalition warplanes destroyed some 83 oil tankers used by the Islamic State near Abu Kamal. CNN reported that U.S. and coalition carried out airstrikes in support of the Turkish intervention in Syria with Syrian opposition forces in August 2016, who seized the town of Jarabulus from ISIS and pushed south and west in an effort to clear the terror group from its border. U.S. Special Operations Forces had initially intended to accompany the offensive but the U.S. was still working on approving the proposal when Turkish units pushed across the border. On August 30, Abu Mohammed al-Adnani was killed in a U.S. drone strike in al-Bab. The New York Times reported that he was traveling in a vehicle that was destroyed by the drone. CNN reported that Al-Adnani was a key deputy to ISIS leader, he also acted as the principal architect in ISIS's external operations and as the group's spokesman, he coordinated the movements of their fighters, directly encouraging them to carry out lone wolf attacks on civilians and military targets. It marked the highest profile killing of an ISIS member. On September 8, an airstrike allegedly carried out by the United States, killed Abu Hajar al-Humsi, the top military commander of the renamed al-Nusra Front, Jabhat Fateh al-Sham, in the countryside of the Aleppo Governorate. Abu Hajar al-Humsi was one of the founding members of the al-Nusra Front and had taken part in the Iraq War against the U.S. when he was part of the processor organization Al-Qaeda in Iraq. The Pentagon denied carrying out the strike and instead claimed Russia was responsible. On September 16, CNN reported that up to 40 U.S. Special Operations Forces are accompanying Turkish troops and vetted Syrian opposition forces as they clear ISIS from northern Syria. The mission was called Operation Noble Lance was authorized that week and is now underway. The U.S. personnel will be conducting the same type of advising, assisting, and training missions that the U.S. had been providing to moderate opposition to local anti-ISIS forces.
The Washington Post reported that the contingent of special operations forces assisting the Turkish and Syrian forces around the cities of Jarabulus and al Rai was sent at the request of the Turkish government. On September 17, two U.S. planes A-10, two Danish F-16 and a U.K. Reaper drone mistakenly bombed a Syrian army base in the city of Deir Ezzizor which is besieged by ISIL. More than 62 soldiers were killed and at least 100 were wounded in the airstrike. ISIL forces attacked immediately after airstrike and took the local high point near Deir Ezzizor Air Base, the Tharda Mountain. SAA forces made a counter-attack and recapture the Tharda Mountain by the end of the day, suffering additional losses. U.S. Air Force immediately issued the official explanation. It was a navigation backslash intelligence mistake and bombing was stopped after Russian Air Force contact group informed them about the SAA loses. Danish Air Force confirmed that their two F-16 fighters participated in the airstrike, insisting that it was stopped in split second after message from Russians came, explaining it as a mistake and regretting the losses. Russian officials accused USA in helping the ISIL by the air raid. Russia has called for a meeting of the United Nations Security Council over the airstrike and the US temporarily ceased airstrikes in the area. On October 3, Ahmed Salama Mabruk, a senior al-Nusra front and previously Egyptian Islamic Jihad commander, was killed by an air-to-surface missile launched by a U.S. unmanned aerial vehicle in Jisr al shughur On November 18, a U.S. airstrike killed an Afghan al-Nusra front commander, Abu Afghan al-Masri, in the town of Sarmada. On November 24, the Washington Post reported that Senior Chief Petty Officer Scott C. Dayton of Explosive Ordnance Disposal Mobile Unit 2 was killed by an IED near Ain Issa, roughly 35 miles northwest of the ISIS's self-proclaimed capital of Raqsa. It was the first time a U.S. service member has been killed in Syria since a contingent of Special Operations Forces was deployed there in October 2015. CNN reported that on November 26, a U.S. drone strike in Raqsa killed Bubaker Hakim, a senior ISIS terrorist suspected of enabling the Seuss terrorist attack. Stars and Stripes reported that in November 2016 airmen from the 621st Contingency Response Wing with a contingent of civil engineers, intelligence personnel and security forces were temporarily deployed to expand and modify the airstrip that the airmen had established earlier in 2016 at an air base where they deployed to near Kobani so it can be used effectively to assist in the offensive to retake Raqsa. The airbase gives the U.S. an additional location for its aircraft to support U.S. and other anti-ISIS forces, but it had been used by U.S. forces limitedly due to the condition of the runway which restricted what types of aircraft could land there. General Carlton Everhart II, commander of U.S. Air Mobility Command, said that the base enables aircraft to deliver critical supplies, equipment, and help position forces, he added that airmen from the 621st Group have supported anti-ISIS coalition forces on the ground in Syria. On December 4, it was reported that a U.S. airstrike in Raqsa killed three key IS leaders, two of whom were involved in plotting the November 2015 Paris attacks. On December 8, during the 4th Palmyra Offensive, a sled coalition warplanes bombed an IS convoy near Palmyra in central Syria and destroyed 168 trucks carrying petroleum. On December 10, it was reported that the U.S. is sending 200 more U.S. Special Operations personnel to Syria, joining the 300 U.S. Special Forces already in the country.
Secretary of Defense Ash Carter said the troops would include special forces trainers, advisors, and bomb disposal teams and that they will continue organizing, training, equipping, and otherwise enabling capable, motivated, local forces to take the fight to is. In particular, the troops will assist SDF forces in the RAXA offensive. France also has special operations units in the country. The New York Times reported that on December 15, coalition warplanes destroyed 14 Syrian Army T-72 battle tanks, three artillery systems and a number of buildings and vehicles that is militants were using at a military base in central Syria that is had seized the previous weekend from Syrian troops and their Russian advisors. On December 31, a coalition airstrike in Raqqa killed Mahmoud al Isai. Al Isai was an ISIL member who supported the organization A Euro Trademark S Media and Intelligence Structure in Faluya before relocating to Raqqa. His role in the group was controlling the flow of instructions and finances between ISIL held areas and ISIL leaders and provided support to propaganda and intelligence outlets. He was also known to have facilitated trans-regional travel with other ISIL external operations coordinators and had a close working and personal relationship with ABD al basit al-Iraqi, the emir of ISIL a Euro trademark S Middle East Attack Network. On January 1, a U.S. drone strike killed Abu Omar al-Turkistani. A Jabhat Fatah al Sham and Turkestan Islamic Party military commander, and three other JFS members near the town of Sarmada in the northern Idlib Governorate. On January 2, more than 25 JFS members were killed in an air raid by suspected U.S. planes. On January 6, as part of the Raqqa Offensive, SDF forces supported by American Special Forces and International Coalition aircraft seized Khalid Jabbar Fortress after fierce fighting with his jihadists. On January 8, the coalition forces conducted a landing operation into the road between the villages of Jazra and Kabr in the western Deir Ezizor Governorate from four helicopters. The landing forces had set up checkpoints on the road and raided a water plant in Kabr, where they killed and captured a number of ISIL fighters. After an hour and 15 minutes, the forces withdrew. On January 11, air-to-surface missile launched from suspected U.S. aircraft hit a Fatah al-Sham convoy consisting of five vehicles and killed 14 JFS members. On January 17, separate U.S. airstrikes in the Idlib Governorate killed Mohammed Habib Busabaun al-Tunisi and ABD al-Jalil al-Muslimi, two Tunisian al-Qaeda external operations leaders. Also that day, it was reported that U.S. warplanes and combat advisors are supporting Turkish military units battling as fighters in northern Syria, particularly at the Battle of al-Bab. On January 19, U.S. airstrikes by Boeing B-52 Strata Fortress strategic bombers struck the former Syrian Army Sheikh Suleiman military base near Darid Izza, in western Aleppo, which was used by Jabhat Fatah al-Sham and the Nawar al-Din al-Zenki movement. The airstrike killed at least 110 al-Qaeda fighters and some al-Zenki fighters, including Abu Hassan al-Taftanas, an al-Qaeda senior leader. Since January 1, 2017, more than 150 AQ members were killed by U.S. airstrikes in 2017. The Sheikh Suleiman base had been operated as a training camp by Jabhat Fateh al-Sham and al-Zenki since 2013. According to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, U.S.-led coalition airstrikes have killed 7,043 people across Syria, of which, 5,768 dead were ISIL fighters, 
304 al-Nusra Front militants and other rebels, 90 government soldiers and 881 civilians. The airstrikes occurred in the period between September 22, 2014 and January 23, 2017. On February 1, it was reported that the U.S. had conducted an airstrike on Carlton Hotel, in the city of Idlib, which was used by Tarar al-Sham's former al-Nusra component for troop housing, and hosting meetings of prominent commanders. On February 2, Sky News reported that Turkish aircraft killed 51 IS fighters in the space of 24 hours in the areas of Abab, Tadef, Kabasan, and Bazat. The airstrikes targeted buildings and vehicles resulting in 85 IS positions destroyed. According to the Turkish military command, since the beginning of Operation Euphrates Shield, at least 1,775 IS militants have been neutralized with more than 1,500 of those killed. On February 3, U.S. airstrikes hit Jund Alaksa and Tarar al-Sham positions in Sarman, near Idlib, and killed more than 12 militants. On the same day, the Royal Jordanian Air Force launched several airstrikes on ISIL outposts in southern Syria. On February 4, 2017, a U.S. airstrike killed Al-Qaeda commander Abu Hani al-Masri, who was a part of Arar al-Sham at the time of his death. It was reported that he was about to defect to Tarar al-Sham before his death. Tariq Abdul Halayem tweeted his condolences upon the death of Abu Hani al-Masri. On February 26, in al-Mastumet, Idlib, a U.S. drone strike killed Abukar al-Masri, who was the deputy leader of al-Qaeda. He was part of a prisoner swap between Iran and al-Qaeda. The U.S. airstrike also killed another Tarar al-Sham militant, who was traveling in the same car. Tariq Abdul Halayem tweeted his condolences upon the death of Abukar al-Masri. The leader of the Liwa Omar al Farouk Brigade in Arar al Sham, Abu Abdul Malak, condemned the killing of Abukar al Masri. After Nasir al Wahashi, it was one of the most important liquidations. On March 8, various news outlets reported that conventional U.S. troops as part of an amphibious task force left their ships in the Middle East and deployed to Syria where they established an outpost from which they can provide artillery support for U.S.-backed local forces who are preparing an assault Raqsa in the battle to liberate the city from his militants. The deployment marks a new escalation in the U.S. war in Syria, and puts more conventional U.S. troops in the battle, that until now had primarily used special operations units. The force is part of the 11th MEU. 400 U.S. Marines from the Battalion Landing Team 1st Battalion, 4th Marines will crew an artillery battery of M777 howitzers, whilst additional infantrymen from the unit will provide security, while resupplies will be handled by part of the Expeditionary 4C Euro Trademark S Combat Logistics Element. A defense official with direct knowledge of the operation said the Marines were flown from Djibouti to Kuwait and then into Syria. There are 900 U.S. soldiers and Marines deployed to Syria in total, under the existing limits put in place by the Obama administration, the formal troop cap for Syria is 503 but commanders have the authority to temporarily exceed that limit to meet military requirements. Approximately 100 U.S. Army Rangers and Strikers and armored Humvees deployed in and around Manbij, U.S. officials said they are there to discourage Syrian, Russian, or Turkish troops from making any moves that could shift the focus away from an assault on his militants, specifically preventing them inadvertently coming under fire. The U.S. believes the pressure on ISIS in Raqsa is working 
a U.S. official said that intelligence indicates some ISIS leadership and operatives continue to try to leave the city. He added that there is also U.S. intelligence that indicates the city is laced with trenches, tunnels, roadside bombs and houses and buildings wired to explode, which if correct indicates that the U.S. has likely been able to gather intelligence from both overhead surveillance aircraft and people on the ground. However, the official also noted that Raqsa will probably not be the final battle against ISIS and added that the group still has some personnel dispersed in areas south and east of the city. According to the official the U.S. estimates that ISIS could have roughly as many as 4,000 fighters in Raqsa. An official told The Guardian that in addition, the U.S. is preparing to send hundreds of troops to Kuwait to be ready to fight ISIS there if needed and the number would be fewer than 1,000. The Independent reported that Colonel John Dorian, a spokesperson for Operation Inherent Resolve, said the artillery unit and the Army Rangers would not have a front-line role. On March 16, a U.S. airstrike hit a mosque in western Aleppo and killed more than 42 people, mostly civilians. The location was assessed by the U.S. military as a meeting place for Al-Qaeda and the U.S. military claimed that the airstrike hit a target across the mosque and was not targeted at the mosque itself. Stars and Stripes reported that on March 28, an airman assigned to the 21st Space Wing was killed in a non-combat incident in northern Syria. The Washington Post reported that on the night of March 21, hundreds of Kurdish and Arab SDF fighters and an undisclosed number of U.S. Special Operations troops as their advisors launched a large-scale heliborne assault on is around the area of the Tabqsa Dam with the eventual goal of taking the dam. They were inserted on the southern bank of the Euphrates River behind its defenses to take them by surprise, col Joe Scrocca, the spokesman for the U.S. led campaign in Iraq and Syria said that as a result they did not come under fire. The following day, there was heavy fighting in the area, Scrocca added that the ground forces were supported by helicopter gunships. U.S. Marine 155mm artillery and U.S. airstrikes. On April 6, the U.S. conducted a landing operation against ISIL, to the west of Deir ez Zor. Two coalition helicopters airdropped soldiers in the area and targeted a car en route from Raqsa to Deir ez Zor. During the landing, U.S. forces killed four ISIL commanders and extracted a Jordanian spy, who had infiltrated ISIL and served as one of its leaders. CNN reported that the operation took place near Mayadan and that one of the ISIS commanders killed by U.S. Special Forces was Abdurakaman Uzbeki, a top facilitator and close associate of ISIS leader, he was also connected to the New Year's nightclub bombing in Turkey. On April 7, in response to chemical weapon attacks against Syrian civilians allegedly by the Syrian government, the U.S. launched missile strikes on the airfield from which the chemical weapon attacks were launched. This incident marks the first direct attack by the U.S. on the Assad government. The Russian Foreign Ministry denounced the attack as being based on false intelligence and against international law suspended the Memorandum of Understanding on Prevention of Flight Safety Incidents that had been signed with the U.S., and called an emergency meeting of the U.N. Security Council. On April 8, ISIS militants attacked a U.S. garrison at Al-Tanf in southern Syria, the Garrisona Euro Superscript 2S main gate was blown up with a vehicle-borne improvised explosive device followed by a ground assault of about 20 to 30 ISIS militants, some of whom were wearing suicide vests. 
The U.S. Central Command said that the A Euro Superscript 3 U.S. Special Operator saw Euro Superscript 3 at the base along with other coalition members and A Euro Superscript 3 U.S. backed Syrian fighter saw Euro Superscript 3, supported by multiple airstrikes, repelled the attack, with no U.S. casualties. The Telegraph reported that during the battle ISIS militants also ambushed a convoy of reinforcements from an allied rebel group who were trying to relieve the base. On CNN reported that on April 11, a misdirected U.S. airstrike near Tabqsa during the Raqqa offensive killed 18 SDF soldiers. The BBC reported that on April 21, U.S. ground troops killed Abdurakaman Uzbeki, a senior member of ISIS who played a key role in an attack on a nightclub in Istanbul and was a close associate of the leader of ISIS. The targeted commando raid took place in Mayadan. The BBC reported that on May 9 an RAF drone strike in Syria stopped an ISIS-staged public killing. Its Hellfire missile killed an ISIS sniper positioned on a rooftop so that the sniper could shoot civilians attempting to walk away. No civilians were harmed and other ISIS fighters fled on motorbikes. The Independent reported that on May 12, SDF forces took control of the Takba Dam after a deal struck by the SDF and around 70 ISIS militants at the dam which included dismantling of IEDs and booby traps, the surrender of heavy weaponry and forced withdrawal of remaining fighters from Tubksa City. On May 18, the U.S. conducted airstrikes on a convoy of a pro-government militia during the 2017 Baghdad Euro Damascus Highway Offensive. According to a U.S. defense official, before the strikes were conducted, government troops were warned they were getting too close to coalition forces garrisoned at Al Tanf but did not respond. According to the U.S., four or five vehicles were destroyed including a tank and two bulldozers. In contrast, the Syrian army reported that two tanks were destroyed and a Shilka Spag was damaged. Eight soldiers were killed. On June 6, U.S. aircraft conducted airstrikes on over 60 troops, a tank, artillery, anti-aircraft weapons, and armed technical vehicles from pro-government forces that had entered what the coalition called al tanf deconfliction zone. On June 8, a U.S. F-15E aircraft shot down a drone while other U.S. aircraft destroyed two armed pickup trucks belonging to pro-government force that moved near U.S.-backed fighters at Al Tanf. On June 18, a U.S. F-A-18E Super Hornet shot down a Syrian Su-22 after it allegedly bombed a SDF position in Jadin, south of Tabqsa. A statement by the Syrian army claimed that the plane was on a mission to bomb ISIL militants. In the same day, Syrian government forces captured the village of Jadin following an SDF withdrawal. On June 20, a U.S. F-15E Strike Eagle shot down a pro-Syrian government Shahid 129 drone near Al Tanf after it displayed hostile intent and advanced on coalition forces. On August 21, U.S. forces in northern Syria were fired on by Turkish-backed Free Syrian Army units near Manbij, and returned fire in a short firefight. On August 29, after the Kalamoun Offensive, ISIL militants were surrounded by Lebanese, Hezbollah and Syrian forces on both sides of the Lebanese-Syrian border and therefore negotiated a safe passage deal so that 670 ISIL fighters and their relatives were to be taken from the border in vehicles to Abu Kamal. The U.S. military disapproved of the deal, Colonel Ryan Dillon. A spokesman for the US-led coalition said the deal undermined efforts to fight the ISIL in Syria, US aircraft carried out airstrikes, blocking the road the ISIL convoy was traveling on, 
before it reached ISIL occupied territory in Deir Ezizor Governorate. Dylan added that other U.S. airstrikes hit militants apparently attempting to join the stranded militants in the convoy. The Independent later reported that the convoy was trapped the towns of Humayma and Al Sukna. On September 3, the Independent reported that 400 ISIS militants and their families traveling in the convoy that was trapped by U.S. airstrikes in Syria in late August, abandoned their vehicles and began traveling on foot to the Iraqi border. CNN reported that on December 12, Magair al-Thora fighters accompanied by U.S. advisors intercepted a convoy of about 10 vehicles that was passing through the 55 km deconfliction zone surrounding the coalition base at Al-Tanf, a firefight ensued resulting in 21 ISIL terrorists killed and a further 17 captured. CNN reported that on December 13, Two U.S. F-22A fighters intercepted two Russian Su-25S jets that crossed the deconfliction line multiple times, an Air Force's Central Command spokesman said that the F-22S conducted multiple maneuvers to persuade the Su-25S to depart our deconflicted airspace, including the release of chaff and flares in close proximity to the Russian aircraft and placing multiple calls on the emergency channel to convey to the Russian pilots that they needed to depart the area. One U.S. defense official said that a Russian Su-35 fighter was also involved in the incident. On December 22, Australian Defence Minister Maurice Payne said that Australia will end airstrikes against Islamic State in Iraq and Syria and bring its six Super Hornet planes back home. He also added that other Australian operations in the region would continue, with 80 personnel who are part of the Special Operations Task Group in Iraq, including Australian Special Forces, continuing their deployment. Military Times reported on January 12 that coalition aircraft carried out more than 90 airstrikes between January 4 and January 11 near the Iraq-Syria border. Army Times reported that on January 20, U.S. airstrikes targeting an ISIS headquarters and command and control center in the middle Euphrates River Valley near Al Shafa killed nearly 150 ISIS militants, according to a press release SDF fighters provided target observation and intelligence on the target. According to the U.S. military officials, on February 7 in deliberate air and artillery strikes, the U.S.-led coalition killed more than 100 pro-government fighters in eastern Syria, in the Euphrates River Valley in the province of Deir Etzer, after they launched an unprovoked attack against the Syrian Democratic Forces. Syrian state news corroborated the events, but insisted that the Kurdish forces were mixed in with ISIS forces, it also stated that 10 Russian mercenaries were among those killed. One of the groups targeted by U.S. airstrikes was the Khorasan Group, an extremist group of suspected Al-Qaeda core members who were alleged to have been plotting an attack against the U.S. and other Western nations. The strikes targeted Khorasan training camps, explosives and munitions production facilities, communications facilities, as well as command and control facilities. The group has been claimed to possess advanced bomb-making skills and their plot is claimed to involve a bomb made of a non-metallic device such as a toothpaste container or clothes dipped in explosive material. The group is reportedly led by Musin al-Fadli, a leader of al-Qaeda and a close confidant of Osama bin Laden. Intelligence officials expressed concern that the group may include militants who were taught by Ibrahim al -Asiri, the chief bomb maker for Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, who is known for his sophisticated bomb making techniques that nearly downed two Western airliners. Later statements by government officials indicated that the threat of a plot may have been less severe than initially reported. 
one official indicated that there did not yet seem to be a concrete plan in the works, while another told The Guardian that there was no indication of an imminent domestic threat from the group at the time the United States began bombing. On November 6, a second round of airstrikes was launched against Khorasan and al-Nusra in northwestern Syria, along with Arar Ash-Sham at its headquarters in Idlib, whose leadership had been infiltrated by al-Qaeda. On November 13, 2014, the U.S. launched a third set of airstrikes against Khorasan. On November 19, the U.S. carried out another airstrike on Khorasan near Hazm, which struck and destroyed a storage facility associated with the group. On December 1, the U.S. carried out another airstrike on Khorasan near Aleppo. On March 24, 2015, it was revealed that the U.S. airstrikes on Khorasan had killed 17 militants from the group. On July 8, 2015, a U.S. airstrike near the town of Sarmada in Idlib, Syria, killed Musin al-Fadli, the leader of Khorasan. Syrian military radar was a Euro-E passive a Euro during the first air strikes, with no attempt to counter U.S. aircraft. During the first night of air strikes, the United States force deployed with harm missiles as a precaution, as it was uncertain how Syria's air defense network would react. In response to the errant airstrike of its forces in September 2016, the Syrian armed forces called it a serious and blatant attack on Syria and its military. The website Airwars which maintains an extensive database of all known allegations in which civilians and friendly forces have been reported killed by the coalition since August 2014 reports between 503 and 700 civilians killed by coalition airstrikes in Syria as of April 2016. On September 29, 2014, Several groups including the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, the Aleppo Media Center, and the local coordination committees reported that U.S. strikes hit a grain silo in the ISIL-controlled town of Manbij in northern Syria, killing two civilians. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported 10 airstrikes, also targeting various parts of the province of Idlib killed at least one child and six other civilians. The group said at least 19 civilians had been killed in coalition airstrikes at that time. The Pentagon reported it had no evidence of any civilian casualties from airstrikes targeting militants in Syria. The United States has also acknowledged that its rules to avoid civilian casualties are looser in Syria than those for drone strikes elsewhere. The SOAR and other activist groups, reported that seven civilians were killed when an airstrike hit a gas distribution facility near the town of Al-Qasham is the eastern Deir al-Zor province on October 17, 2014 and three civilians were killed in an airstrike on October 16, 2014 in the northeast province of Al-Hasaka. According to their reports, most of the civilians killed were fuel tanker drivers. According to Reuters, 50 civilians were killed in Syria by US-led airstrikes, since the start of the campaign in late September 2014. On December 28, 2014, a US airstrike in the northern Syrian town of Al-Bab killed more than 50 civilians. On May 21, 2015, the United States admitted it probably killed two children in bombings near Haramon 4 and November 5, 2014. These are the first such admissions of the campaign, and followed a military investigation. A similar investigation regarding an event in Syria is underway, and two regarding events in Iraq. Two adult civilians were also minorly injured in the harem strikes.
The deaths and injuries are attributed by the military investigation to unintentional secondary explosions, after the bombers hit their intended targets, linked to the Khorasan. On July 19, 2016 a coalition-led airstrike on the ISIL-controlled villages of Tokar and Hushariya reportedly killed at least 56 civilians, including 11 children. On August 3, 2016, dozens of civilians were killed after an airstrike in Kaguro trademark IM, some sources claiming that 30 were killed. At least 33 people were killed in a U.S. led coalition airstrike on a school near Raksa in March 2017 in what is described as war crime. On March 16, 2017, a U.S. airstrike in rebel-held Aleppo killed at least 46 people and wounded more than 100 after warplanes hit a mosque. According to CJTFOIR, by May 2016, ISIL has lost 25% of the territory it possessed in Syria since the campaign began, mostly due to advances by YPG-SDF forces with heavy coalition air support. Overall the American-led air campaign against ISIL is estimated by the Pentagon to have struck 32,000 targets and killed 50,000 militants, with approximately one-third of these losses taking place in Syria. On October 20, 2014 the United States began airdropping supplies to Syrian Kurdish forces, including the YPG, in Kobana registered trademark. The Kurdish forces there have been engaged in battle with ISIL during the siege of Kobana registered trademark. Prior to October 20, the United States and its coalition partners fighting against ISIL in Syria, had not provided any supplies to Kurdish forces in their fight against ISIL. Much of the reason for U.S. having to airdrop supplies was due to the Turkish government's refusal to allow supplies to pass through their border into Kobana registered trademark. The U.S. specifically airdropped weapons, ammunition, and medical supplies supplied by Iraqi Kurdistan specifically to supply the Kurdish forces in Syria. On October 21, a video was released by ISIL showing what it claimed was a bundle of airdropped small arms, ammunition, and other supplies from the United States. The Pentagon said it was analyzing the video and could not at the time confirm whether the video was authentic but that the materials were similar and video would be analyzed by the Department of Defense to analyze its authenticity. On October 22, the Pentagon confirmed that one of the airdrops had been intercepted by ISIL but that it most likely would not give ISIL any real advantage in their operations. During the beginning of the coalition interventions, leaders including U.S. President Obama, said coalition ground forces would not be used in the fight against ISIL either in Iraq or Syria unless they were local coalition forces. While in Iraq thousands of coalition troops from the United States and other nations have been deployed in an advisory capacity, in Syria no ground troops from the coalition intervening in Syria were deployed in the beginning of the intervention. In November 2015, the Obama administration began the deployment of U.S. special forces to Syria, on the mission of assisting rebel forces in their fight against ISIL. President Obama then ordered several dozen special operations troops into Rojava in northern Syria to assist local fighters battling the Islamic State, authorizing the first open-ended mission by American ground forces into the country. In March 2016, King Abdullah of Jordan said that British forces had helped in the building up of a Mechanist battalion in southern Syria consisting of tribal fighters to combat the Syrian army. On March 17, 2016, the day after the declaration of the Federation of Northern Syria, 
U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter praised the Syrian Democratic Forces as having proven to be excellent partners of ours on the ground in fighting ISIL. We are grateful for that, and we intend to continue to do that, recognizing the complexities of their regional role. During the SDF's May 2016 offensive against ISIL in northern Raqsa, U.S. Special Forces were widely reported and photographed to be present, and to wear badges of YPG and YPJ on their uniforms. On May 21, 2016, Joseph Vodal, Commanding General of U.S. Central Command, completed a secret several-hour-long trip to northern Syria to visit several locations where there were U.S. Special Operations Forces and meet with local forces the U.S. was helping train to fight ISIL. The visit came as the first of 250 additional U.S. Special Operations Forces were beginning to arrive in Syria to work with local forces. The commander overseeing the war in Syria, at the end of a long Saturday spent touring SDF bases, said we do, absolutely, have to go with what we've got. In September 2016, the U.S. spokesman for the combined joint task force A-Euro Operation Inherent Resolve confirmed that the SDF, including the YPG, is also part of the vetted forces in the train and equip program and will be supplied with weapons. The president of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, condemned this and claimed that the SDF are endangering our future. In October 2016, U.S. Army Lt. Gen. Stephen J. Townsend the commander of the International Coalition Against ISIL, said that the SDF would lead the impending assault on Raqsa, ISIL's stronghold and capital, and that SDF commanders would plan the operation with advice from American and coalition troops. From November, more than 300 U.S. Special Operations Forces were embedded to train and advise SDF fighters in the Raqsa offensive. In March 2017, the Donald Trump administration deployed an additional 400 U.S. Marines in Syria to expand the fight against ISIS in the Raqsa offensive which they can provide artillery support for U.S. backed local forces who are preparing an assault Raqsa in the battle to liberate the city from his militants. The deployment marks a new escalation in the U.S. war in Syria and puts more conventional U.S. troops in the battle, that until now had primarily used special operations units. The force is part of the 11th MEU, 400 U.S. Marines from the Battalion Landing Team 1st Battalion, 4th Marines will crew an artillery battery of M777 howitzers, whilst additional infantrymen from the unit will provide security while resupplies will be handled by part of the Expeditionary Force Euro Trademark S Combat Logistics Element. During the Raqsa campaign alone this small artillery battalion fired over 40,000 shells, more than were used in the entire 2003 invasion of Iraq and only 20,000 fewer than all those fired by the U.S. military in Operation Desert Storm. Unlike previous U.S. combat operations, no name had been given to the American intervention in Syria and Iraq until it was announced in mid-October that the operational name would be Inherent Resolve. The decision to keep the conflict nameless drew considerable media criticism. Turkey, a NATO member, has been involved in the Syrian civil war since the beginning of hostilities. Turkey has trained and armed some members of the Free Syrian Army, and has been involved in certain spillover incidents, however so far Turkey has not been involved in direct combat. On October 2, 2014, the Turkish parliament authorized direct military action in both Iraq and Syria including using military force in Syria and Iraq as well as allowing coalition members to use bases in Turkey.
Turkey has also stationed troops and tanks on its southern border near the Syrian border city of Kobana registered trademark. The Turkish government demanded several things to go along with them intervening against ISIL, including a buffer zone in northern Syria, a no-fly zone over certain parts of northern Syria, ground troops from other countries, and the training of moderate opposition forces to fight both ISIL and al-Assad. Turkey also holds sovereignty over the tomb of Suleiman Shah 35 km inside Syria where it maintains a small garrison of special forces that is surrounded by ISIL-controlled territory. On February 22, 2015, the Turkish army mounted a rescue operation across the border to evacuate its soldiers from the tomb of Suleiman Shah, an exclave of Turkey south of Kobana registered trademark. The Turkish convoy reportedly transited through Kurdish-held Kobana registered trademark en route to the tomb. One Turkish soldier was killed in what Ankara described as an accident. The success of the operation was announced February 22 by Turkish Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoğlu. Dmitry Peskov, spokesman for the Russian President Vladimir Putin, described the U.S. airstrikes on the Sharae airbase as an act of aggression against a sovereign state delivered in violation of international law under a far-fetched pretext. A serious blow to Russian-US relations, which are already in a poor state. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov referred to the Shariat attack as an act of aggression under a completely invented pretext. He compared events in April 2017 to the situation of 2003, when the USA, the UK, and several of their allies invaded Iraq without the UN Security Council's approval, a grave violation of international law, but at that point they at least tried to show some material evidence. <laughs>